So we have three days left in one of the most consequential elections of our lifetime, and we still have work to do. This is a very important state, and we have to get this solved. We have to get you out, and we can't take a chance of losing the great state of North Carolina. We're not going to lose the great state of North Carolina. So here we go now, uh, two days and counting. Remember when we were starting this thing like 60 days ago? Home stretch right there. State of the race, come on over here, Jimmy. Uh, this is what our forecasts have been looking like, and this really goes back more than a month. All right, what, we, we think everything in gold and or yellow is, is a toss up, right? But about a week ago, we had Arizona lean Republican, so we gave it that little rose red color there. I, I don't know what's going on in Iowa, Dana, right? I mean, we've got a likely Republican, you know. Trump won at nine points in 2016, won at eight points in 2020. So we'll see how that goes. Here's another thing to look at, all right? You know, this is New York Times from overnight, okay? These are all the swing states. Everything's super close, as best as we can tell. Look, someone's going to be right, someone is going to be wrong. That's just what it comes down to. Uh, they've got Trump ahead in Arizona. They've got her up a point in Georgia. They got a dead tie in Michigan. They got Carolina Harris leading there by two. Uh, they got Harris up three in Nevada. But if you look at some of the early voting in Nevada, Republicans have done a very good job of turning out their voters. In fact, they've got a lead right there by about almost five points right now in the early voting in, uh, in Nevada. Pennsylvania, flat out tie right there. I'll come back to that in a moment. And they've got Wisconsin up too. So. <clears throat> what do we know? James Blair might know a few things. Political director, RNC, Trump campaign. James, good morning to you. Just give us your state of the race right now. What does your campaign see? We're very optimistic right now. We feel good about where things are. Right now, obviously, what we're watching is people are voting. And what we've seen is historic early voting by Republicans outperforming 2020 or even 2022. So from our perch, things look pretty good right now. Uh, I'm sure we'll go through state by state, but some highlights. North Carolina, we won the early vote. That's never happened before. In Nevada, the mail dumps are coming in, and they're not as blue uh, as the Democrats would like them to be. And there's not as many of them. So lots of good signs in our direction right okay, now. Okay, I want to read this from Nate Cohen. This is on the New York Times polling that I sh showed our viewers here. Across these final polls, white Democrats were 16 percent likely to respond than white Republicans. That's a larger disparity than our earlier polls this year, and it's not much better than our final polls in 2020, even with the pandemic over. It raises the possibility that the polls could underestimate Mr. Trump yet again. We do a lot to account for this, but in the end, there are no guarantees. How do you read that? I think it's covering. I think that they know where things stand. Look, in all of those polls, in all the battleground states, I heard Carl before this talking about the recalled vote, they've set the electorate to the left of 2020, which doesn't comport with what we know, which is that all of these electorates have moved to the right just on a registration eligible electorate basis itself. And obviously, we see that starting to manifest in the early voting pattern. So uh, I think that they're sort of putting some cover out there because they're going to underrepresent President Trump's support. What they essentially are saying there is we got too many Democrats in the survey. We don't have enough Republicans. We know that, but we're going to publish these numbers on the eve of the election anyway. So the pollsters have told us that they've accounted for this because of the miss in 16, the miss in 2020. We'll see whether or not that happens. Uh, Wall Street Journal has been a big target for your campaign. Young men could boost Trump to victory if they show up. That's the headline. What are you seeing out there in the battlegrounds? Well, let's just talk about the partisan registration states where they register by party, because then you don't have to take my word for it. You, you can go look for yourself. Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. Republicans have turned out more 0 of 4 voters and 1 of 4 voters, so those less frequent or newly registered voters than the Democrats have in every single one of those states. So I'd say that there's evidence that it's working on our part. We are turning out those lower propensity voters, be they young men or otherwise. So everything you can measure right now suggests that it's going well for us. Mm. My sense is on Tuesday, we're going to be spending a lot of time in Pennsylvania. Maybe that's right. Maybe it's wrong. But this eight years ago, this is Trump winning that state by 44,000 votes over Hillary Clinton. Four years ago, this is Biden winning the state by 81,000 votes in 2020. We'll see. But it's just my sense that the Keystone State will be very critical and key come Tuesday. How much can your campaign do? in the closing 48 hours. 
a lot. We can keep getting out the vote, and let's talk about Pennsylvania. Right now, there's nearly 700,000 registered Democrats in the state of Pennsylvania who had cast a vote by this point in 2020 or 2022, and they haven't cast a vote yet, and they don't have mail ballots. That's a huge hurdle for them to climb. Secondarily, again, we've talked about the voter registration before, Bill, but just to put a fine point on it, there was 685,000 more registered Democrats in the state of Pennsylvania four years ago than Republicans. Today, that number has been cut to about 280,000. So a huge swing in our direction. James Blair, thank you for your time. I know you're working day and night. Thanks for coming on today, and we'll see who's right. Thanks. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.